Hey everyone, how's it going? In this video, we're going to work through an example that involves maximizing the volume of a cylinder with a set surface area. The problem says, a closed cylindrical tank is to have a surface area of 20 square meters. Find the radius the tank needs to have so that the volume it can hold is as large as possible. Alright, so let's work through this. If, let's say, here's our cylinder. It looks a little like that. Uh, let's first write down the equations for volume and surface area. So, volume. Well, we can think of a cylinder as just a whole bunch of circles just piled on top of each other, right? Then the volume is just going to be the area of one circle times the amount of circles there are. So, what's the formula for area of a circle? Well, that's just pi r squared. And how many circles can fit from here to here? Well, that depends on the height. So it's going to be pi r squared times height. So what r is this? Well, this is just the radius of the cylinder. And what h is this? That's just the height of the cylinder. Okay. Now what about surface area? Well, surface area can be broken down into a few different pieces. So first we have this piece on top and this piece on bottom. And these are both circles. So what's the area of a circle again? That's pi r squared. Since we have two circles, we have 2 pi r squared. Now we also have this face right here, the one that kind of goes around. Now if I were to unroll it, let's say from this point, I would actually end up with a rectangle. Now with my rectangle, my height, h, is just going to be this same h right here. And this length, well that length is just going to be this circumference. So my area of the rectangle my area of the rectangle is actually just the circumference times the height. So what's the circumference? Well that's 2 pi r times h. Awesome. So now let's plug some values in, right? It tells us that the surface area is set at 20. So I'm gonna say 20 is equal to 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. Okay, now what are we looking to do? We're trying to maximize our volume and find our radius. So we're going to be using this equation right here, and we're going to be paying special attention to the radius. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to replace my height in this volume equation with a radius term. And in order to do that, I'm just going to solve for height in this equation right here and replace it in the volume. So let's do that. Um, what I can do is divide both all of these by 2, just to simplify some things. This is going to give me 10, and these are going to cancel out. So what I end up with is 10 is equal to pi r squared plus pi r h. Now what I can do, these both have a pi r in them, right? So I can factor that out and get 10 is equal to pi r, and then I have an r plus h left over. I can divide both sides of this by pi r, and then this cancels out, and I'm left with 10 over pi r is equal to r plus h, and then I can just subtract r from both sides. And that gives me 10 over pi r minus r equals h. Awesome. So now we have our equation for h. So now what I can do, actually I can take this h and just plug it in here. So let's do that. If originally I have v is equal to pi r squared h, now I'm going to rewrite it as v is equal to pi r squared 10 over pi r minus r. Okay, so this pi r I can actually distribute to both terms and it's going to give me well, the pi is going to cancel. One of the r's is going to cancel. So I'm just going to end up with 10r minus pi r cubed. Really cool. So this is our volume equation now. So whenever we're trying to maximize something, we always look for the zero uh, um, for the first derivative, the critical points, because that's that points to either a maximum or a minimum. So uh, in this case, it's pretty obvious that 
our volume is at a minimum when our radius is zero because then our volume is zero. So any critical point that we find is going to give us a maximum. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the derivative of volume, so v prime. And that's going to give us 10 minus 3 pi r squared. So the derivative of 10 r, the r just becomes 1 and we get 10. And here we do the power rule, the 3 drops down, we get 3 pi r squared. Cool. So all we have to do now is set this equal to 0. So we say 0 is equal to 10 minus 3 pi r squared. And we just solve for r. So I'm going to bring this over to that side. I'm going to get 3 pi r squared equals 10. I'm going to divide both sides by 3. And then I'm going to get pi r squared equals 10 thirds. Divide both sides by pi as well. That's going to give me r squared is equal to 10 over 3 pi. And then I'm just going to square root both sides, and I'm going to get r is equal to plus minus the square root of 10 over 3 pi. Now, let's think about this logically. Can I really have a negative radius? Well, no, because I can't say my cylinder has a radius of negative 3 feet. That just doesn't make sense. So actually, this negative isn't part of the real answer. So we get a radius that is equal to 10 over 3 pi. And this comes out to be something like 1.03. Now, another way we can verify this is by graphing this equation right here and seeing where it hits 0. So you can see here we have the graph. And um, what, what we get is that um, you can see that it does uh, hit a zero point right a little bit after one. So this just kind of proves what we found that our radius of 1.3 gives us a maximum volume. Now if we wanted to find that volume all we have to do is plug it in. So we have volume is equal to pi r squared h and then that's equal to pi 1.03 squared h but we don't know our h, right? Well, to find our h, we can actually just plug it in to here. So h is equal to 10 over 1.03 pi minus 1.03. That gives us h is equal to, let's see what 1.03 is, or 1.03 times pi. 1.03 times 3.14 is let's say 3.23 so 10 divided by 3.23 gives us 3.09 so 3.09 minus 1.03 and we get h is equal to 3.09 minus 1.03 2.06 very cool so this is equal to pi times 1.03 squared times 2.06, which equals 1.03 times 1.03 times 2.06 times 3.14, 6.86 meters cubed. Now, let's also just verify that our surface area is indeed still 20. So recall surface area is equal to 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi, or sorry, it's equal to, um, it's equal to pi r, uh, 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. So let's plug in and we get 2 times pi times 1.03 squared plus 2 times pi plus 1.03 plus 2.06. Now 2 times 3.14 times 1.03 times 1.03 gives us 6.66 plus 2 times 3.14 
times 1.03 times 2.06 gives us 13.32 and that should be a multiplication actually all of these should be multiplication and if we add these up we get 6.66 plus 13.32 and we get approximately 20 so approximately 20 so this just confirms that this is the largest volume we get for a radius value of 1.03. I hope this video helped. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, happy studying.